A Handful of Dust by Evelyn Wall, dramatised for radio by Bill Matthews, with Tara Fitzgerald as Brenda and Jonathan Cullen as Tony. Episode one. The shop can do without me for a while, I think. Good morning, Mumsy. So, what was your evening? Audrey rang up at eight and asked me to dinner. Ten of us at the embassy, rather dreary. After that, we all went to a party given by a woman called de Treme. I know her. American. Hasn't paid for the toile de jouet chair covers we made her last April. Yes, I had a dull time too. Didn't hold a card all evening and came away four pounds to the bad. Poor Mumsy. I'm lunching at Viola Chasm's today. What about you? Nothing so far. I can always go round to Bratz. Oh, but that's so expensive. I didn't order anything here, I'm afraid. I thought you were certain to be out. I still may be. It isn't twelve yet. Where are you going for the weekend? Hetton. Hetton? The lasts. She's lovely. He's rather a stick. I didn't know you knew them. I don't really. Tony last asked me in Bratz the other night. He may have forgotten. Send a telegram just before you go to remind them. It's better than ringing up. Gives them no chance to make excuses. What do you know about them? They owe me for a table. I used to see her quite a lot before she married. She was Brenda Ricks then, daughter of Lord St. Cloud. People used to be mad about her when she was a girl. Really? Wasted on Tony last. He's such a prig. Everyone thought she would marry Jock Grant Mingis. Yes, I know him. They've been married something like five or six years. I should say it was about time she began to be bored. Rich, but everything goes on keeping up the house. I hear it's huge and quite hideous. At least one child. Mumsy, you are wonderful. I believe you know about everyone. <laughs> it's all a matter of paying attention while people are talking. Well, I must be off. Lady Metroland is due to come in at 12.15 to discuss her bathroom ceiling. Don't worry, it's my telephone. Hello? Mr Beaver? Yes? This is Mrs Tipping. Excellent. I'm so sorry to trouble you. I was wondering... Yes? Could you possibly tell me the name of the young man you introduced me to last night at Madame de Tromé's? He had a reddish moustache. I think he was an MP. I expect you mean Jock Grant Mingus. That's him. You don't by any chance know where I can find him, do you? You might be able to get him at Bratz. He's almost always there at lunchtime. Thank you so very much. It is kind of you. I hope you'll come and see me someday. Certainly, Goodbye. I... Goodbye. Good morning, Brenda, darling. Are you receiving visitors to your chamber? Only you, darling. Come over here. Yes. <sighs> Anything interesting in the post? No. The mayor wants me to open something rather the next month. I needn't, need I? Oh, you better. We haven't done anything for him for ages. Well, you must write the speech. I'm getting too old for the girlish one I've used before. <laughs> oh, and Angela says, will we come and stay the weekend after next? Uh, that's easy. Not on her life, we won't. I guess not. Although it sounds an amusing party. No, well, you go if you like. I can't possibly get away. That's all right. I knew it would be no before I opened the letter. Well, what sort of pleasure can be gained from going all the way to Yorkshire just for a weekend? Tony, don't be cross. I know we aren't going. I'm not making a thing about it. I just thought it might be fun to eat someone else's food for a change. Well, as a matter of fact, I probably can get away that weekend. Darling, are you sure you wouldn't hate it? I dare say not. If you're sure. I am. What's in the papers? A woman in America has had twins by two different husbands. Would you have thought that possible? Only in America. A little girl has been strangled in a cemetery with a boot lace. Uh. That play we went to see about a farm is coming off. Uh. Aliens have landed in Ottery St Mary and have opened a cake shop. Uh. I don't believe you're listening. Oh, sorry. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I was just thinking. Really? 
I was thinking how delightful it is that it's Friday and we haven't got anyone coming for the weekend. Oh, you thought that? Why, what's up? Well, it sometimes seems rather pointless keeping up a house this size if we don't now and then ask some other people to stay in it. Pointless? I can't think what you mean. I don't keep up this house to be a hostel for all bores to come and gossip in. Yes, Tony. The lasts have always lived here and I hope John Andrew will be able to keep it on after me. It's a part of English life. It's... it's, Oh, (laughs) God. What have I set off? (laughs) I say, darling, am I being pompous again? Oh, no, darling, not pompous. (laughs) You wouldn't know how. (laughs) Sorry. Oh, I'm glad, too, that no-one's coming. Good. Jock, hello. Oh, uh, Beaver. What are you drinking? Yeah, nothing so far. Brandy and ginger ale, thanks. Uh, excuse me, Mr Scott Mingins. A brandy and ginger and a scotch for me, please, McDougall. Uh, coming up, sir. Uh, Mrs Tipping has left a message asking you to luncheon. Thank you, McDougall. Sir? Isn't she that old girl you wished on me at the party last night? Yes. Are you going? No. I'm no good at lunch parties. <sighs> Mr Beaver, sir, there's ten shillings against you in my books for last month. Um, thank you, McDougall. Remind me of it sometime, will you? <sighs> Very good, sir. I'm going to Hetton tomorrow. Are you now? Give Tony and Brenda my love. What's the form? Very quiet and enjoyable. Comfortable? Mm. Not bad. Plenty to drink. Rather a shortage of bathrooms. I've never met Brenda. You'll like her. She's a grand girl. I often think Tony Last is one of the happiest men I know. He's got money, a devoted wife, a son he's crazy about, and he lives in the place he loves most in the world. Most enviable. You don't know anyone else who's going, do you? I was wondering if I could get a lift down there. I don't, I'm afraid. It's quite easy by train. Uh, but more pleasant by road. And cheaper. Yes. <laughs> I suppose so. Well, I'll be off now. You won't have another before I go? Yes, I think I will. Oh, right. McDougall, another whiskey. Oh, add it to my slate, will you? Well, moustache. How about that, McDougall? Beaver bought me a drink. Here it is, sir. I said, McDougall, do you know anything about pigs? Uh, not a great deal, sir. Me neither. Hmm. People keep writing to me about them from my constituency. Ben, why didn't Thunderclap jump? What do you suppose your bloody legs are for? Here, here, take this whip and give it a tap when you reach the jump. Here we go. Legs! Ah! You're all right, aren't you? Yes, I think you put in a short step. Short step, me grandmother. You just opened your bloody legs and took an arse. You think so? Next time, keep hold of the reins. Mr Hackett, what's happened? John, are you all right? Never better, Nanny. He's all right. Oh, dear, look at the mud on your coat. We'll have you riding the winner at Aintree in no time. Come along, it's time to come in for your milk. Can I have it in Mummy's room? That depends. On what? Lots of things. Tell me one of them. On you're not asking a lot of silly questions. Silly old tart. John, how dare you? Silly old tart. Silly old John. tart. Silly old tart. You go straight up to the nursery. I'm going to speak to your mother about you. Please, Nanny. I don't know what it means, but I didn't mean it. Now, listen, John, it was very wrong of you to call Nanny a silly old tart. Think of all she does for you. She's paid too. Be quiet. You must learn to be considerate to people less fortunate than you, especially women. Do you understand? Is Nanny less fortunate than me? Is Ben Never less... mind. Now, go and say sorry to Nanny and promise never to use that word about anyone again. All right. And because you've been so naughty, you're not to ride tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday. I never go riding on Sunday. Well, next day then. But you said tomorrow. It isn't fair to change now. John, don't argue, or I'll send Thunderclap back to your Uncle Reggie. Now run off and say you're sorry to Nanny. All right. It's all right to go riding on Monday, isn't it? You did say tomorrow. Yes, I suppose so. Hooray! (laughs) Thunderclap went very well today. Didn't you come off? Yes, once. But it wasn't Thunderclap's fault. I just opened my bloody leg and cut an arse up. 
Oh, God. How did the lecture go? Bad. Rotten bad. Well, sooner you than me. What are your plans for the afternoon? Nothing much. I may go over to Pig Stanton after lunch, and I think we've got a tenant for Low Water Farm, and I ought to see how much needs doing to it. I wouldn't say no to going to the movies. All right, I can always leave Low Water till Monday. And we might go to Woolworths afterwards, hey? What would a trip to the movies be without a trip to Woolworths afterwards? <laughs> That's what I always say. <laughs> Sir, a telegram has just arrived. Oh, thank you, Ambrose. Bad is. Something too horrible has happened. Look. Arriving 318. So looking forward to visit Beaver. What's Beaver? It's a young man. Did you ask him to stay? Well, I suppose I did, in a vague kind of way, the other night at Bratz. He's the only chap there, so we had some drinks and he said something about wanting to see the house. I never thought he'd hold it against me. Well, it jolly well serves you right, going up to London on business and leaving me alone here. Who is he anyway? Just a young man. His mother has that shop. Oh, that shop. Yes, I used to know her. She's hell. Come to think of it, we owe her some money. Look here, we must put a call through and say we're ill. Too late. He'll be on the train now. Anyway, we'll put him in Galahad. No one who sleeps there ever comes again. The bed's agony. What on earth are we going to do with him? It's too late to get anyone else. I'll look after him. It's easier alone. You go over to Pig Stanton. You wouldn't, would you? I would. Oh, darling. What would I do without you? Mr Beaver, madam. Thank you, Ambrose. Mr. Beaver, how nice of you to come. The pleasure is mine. I hope I'm not the first to arrive. I have to break it to you at once. We haven't got a party. Oh. I'm afraid you'll be terribly bored. Not at all. If you're not too tired from your journey, perhaps you'd like to see the garden. I'd be delighted. Through here. How is your mother? She's very well. I haven't seen her in ages. She's one of my oldest friends in London. So what parties are in the offing? Polly Cockpurse is having one soon. Yes, I heard. Are you coming up for it? I don't expect so. We never go anywhere nowadays. Let me see. What's happening to Mary and Simon? Oh, didn't you know? That's broken up. When? It all started in Austria in the summer. Oh, dear. Who else? The Helm Hubbards? Their marriage isn't too happy either. Oh, you know Daisy? Daisy, yes, I know Daisy. She's just started a new restaurant. It isn't going well. Oh, dear. Dear me. What fun everyone seems to be having. Oh, Beaver. I hope you slept well. Beautifully. Good, good. I say, is that a train guide? I hope you're not thinking of leaving us yet. Alas, I've got to get back tonight. Oh, too bad. I've hardly seen you. The trains aren't very good on Sundays. The best one leaves at 5.45 and gets in about 9. That'll do fine. Mm, sure you can't stay till tomorrow? Quite sure. Mm. Well, I'm just off to church with John Andrew. I um, don't suppose you'd care to come? Oh, yes, I should like that very much. No, really, I shouldn't if I were you. Brenda will be down directly. Ring if you need anything. Oh. Well, all right. Now, cut the cards again and I'll see if it's any clearer. Oh, yes. There's going to be a sudden death, which will cause you great pleasure and profit. In fact, you are the killer. <gasps> you will kill a woman, then you'll go on a long journey across the sea, marry six natives, have 11 children, grow a beard and die. <laughs> Beast! <laughs> And all this time I've been thinking I was serious. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tony. <clears throat> Jolly church? Most enjoyable. Beaver, I feel I've been neglecting you. 
Not at all. So why don't I give you a proper tour of the house this afternoon? Well, yes, that would be most interesting. Well, don't worry, it won't take more than two or three hours. Oh, there you are. I thought you and Tony would never return. Well, what did you think of it? Magnificent. You don't have to say that to me, you know. Well, a lot of the things are very fine. Yes, the things are all right, I suppose. Don't you like the house? Me? Oh, I detest it. Oh, I don't mean that really. I do wish that it wasn't all, every bit of it, so appallingly ugly. Only I'd die rather than say that to Tony. He's crazy about the place. I could tell that. We should be quite rich if we didn't live here. We support 15 servants, as well as gardeners and night watchmen and the people at the farm and odd little men constantly popping in to wind the clocks and clean the moat and cook the accounts. All the while, Tony and I fuss about whether it's cheaper to take a car up to London for the night or buy an excursion ticket. Uh, Beaver, I don't want to appear inhospitable, but my driver is waiting to take you to the station. Right. My bag's ready in the hall. My dear. Next time you come, we'll give you bedivere. But I dare say you won't ever come again. People so seldom do. Do let me know when you're coming to London. I may be up this week. Goodbye, Mr. Beaver. I hope we'll meet again soon. I hope so too. Goodbye. Goodbye. Do come again. Goodbye. Uh. <sighs> well, that's the last of him. You were superb, darling. Oh, he wasn't too awful. No, I must say he took a very intelligent interest when we went round the house. So, who was there? No one. No one? Oh, my poor boy. They weren't expecting me. It was awful at first, but then it got better. They were just as you said. She's very charming. He scarcely spoke. She did mention at one point taking a flat in London. Did she? What does she want? Something quite simple. But it's all quite vague. Very interesting. Yoo-hoo, Marjorie! Over here! Oh, Brenda, darling! <laughs> <laughs> what does the country do to you? You look like a thousand pounds. Oh. This feels like old times. The Rex sisters walking down a busy London thoroughfare. The lovely Rex sisters, as I believe the Express called us. So where should we go? I hear Daisy has opened up a new place. Oh, all right. It's just round the corner. What's the news from Hatton? All the same. Tony madly feudal, John Andrew cursing like a stable boy. And you? Me. Oh, I'm all right. Who's been to stay? No one. We had a friend of Tony's called Mr Beaver last weekend. John Beaver? I shouldn't have thought he was Tony's ticket at all. He wasn't. I thought he was rather pitiable. Oh, he's that all right. Do you fancy him? Heavens, no. What do you suppose is Mr Beaver's sex life? Oh, I shouldn't know. Pretty dim, I imagine. You do fancy him? Oh, well, I don't see such a lot of young men. Ah, here we are. Two, please. This way. Hello, Polly. Hello, you two. You are both coming to my party, aren't you? Of course. Only don't tell anyone about it. The house will only hold a few people, just old friends. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to see what Polly's real old friends are like. She hasn't known anyone for more than five years. So are you coming up for Polly's party? I'd like to, if I can find someone to take me. Lady Brenda, I must come and speak with you, even though I'm in a great hurry. Hello, Mrs Beaver. <laughs> it's so long since we met, and John has been telling me about a delightful weekend he had with you. It was very quiet. Oh, that's just what he loves. Really? Tell me, Lady Brenda, is it true you're looking for a flat? Well, I... Because I think I've got just the place for you. It's being done up now. It'll be ready just before Christmas. I'm not yet sure no, that I dear, really... I must fly. You couldn't possibly come for a cocktail this evening. Then you could hear all about oh, it. I could, yeah, but I do. I'll expect you about six. Goodbye. Oh, Brenda, what's this about a flat? Oh. Just something I've been thinking of.
people want is somewhere to dress and telephone, and I have found the very thing. I'm dividing up a house in Belgravia into six flats of one room each and a bath. Most of the money is going into the bathrooms with all the latest American gadgets and limitless hot water. The other room will have space for a bed and a large built-in wardrobe with an internal light. I'll ask my husband and let you know. Oh, yes, you will let me know soon, won't you? Because everyone will be wanting one. I'll let you know very soon. Well, I must catch my train. I'll take you. You don't have to wait, you know. I've got lots to read. I want to stay. It's very sweet of you. I suppose you wouldn't take me to Polly's party, would you? Well, I... Um... I wish I could. I've already accepted a dinner invitation for beforehand. Never mind. But we'll meet there. If I go. I wish I could have taken you. It's quite all right. I was just wondering. I think perhaps I'll leave you now. Yes, run along. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. You know, I'm sure I could get out of that dinner. Do you think you could? I'm sure I can. Good. You know, you're causing a great deal of trouble. Why? You're taking London's only spare man. <laughs> oh, a chance to see him before I go. Lady Dean is fuming because we're going to be one short at her table tonight. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. I didn't realise. Mr John Beaver. Hello, Mr Beaver. Mrs Follett. I've had Lady Dean on the phone. Very upset with you. I'm sorry to hear it. Anyway, I must go. We're dining at nine. Stay a bit, Marjorie. Let's have a drink. No, I must go. See you later at Polly's. Well, I suppose we ought to be going too. Yes. Where? I thought Espinosa's. Lovely. Only listen. I want you to understand that it's my dinner. Of course not. Nothing of the sort. Yes, it is. I'm a year older than you and an old married woman and quite rich, so please, I'm going to pay. I want you to order for me. I don't want very much. Waiter, two dry martinis, please. Certainly, sir. You don't know how exciting it is for me to take a young man out. I've never done it before. I'm sorry if I was an ass in the taxi just now. Hey. Did you mind it when I tried to kiss you? Me? No, not particularly. Well, then why wouldn't you let me? Oh, dear. You've got a lot to learn. How do you mean? You mustn't ever ask questions like that. Will you try and remember? Talk to me as if I was an undergraduate having his first walkout. Oh, is this a walkout? Not as far as I'm concerned. I'm not sure it hasn't been a mistake taking you out to dinner. I'm sorry, Brenda, I really am. You've got to learn to be nicer. I don't believe you'd find it impossible. A good little, bad little, a you hoo hoo. What makes you tease like you do? See that old house? I hear they're demolishing it to build some flats. Shut up. Come here. We seem to be stuck with my friends. Are you dying of it? No, indeed. Never happier. We could go and get stuck with your friends, if you like. Or you could introduce me to some more people. Oh, not more people. Let's go and dance. All right. Excuse me. Jock, how are you? Brenda, you're looking splendid. Dance with me later, please. You're on. Dance with me now, Jock. Oh, uh, yeah. hello, Polly. Uh, all right. <laughs> Terrific party, Polly. Never mind about that now. Who would ever have believed it? John Beaver. Are you shocked? Oh, delighted. It's ensured this party will go down in history. That was Polly. 
So I gathered. Well, darling, it's official. You're the talk of London. And if you weren't already, you will be once Polly has finished her morning round of telephone calls. I can't tell you how innocent it was. He didn't even come in. No one's going to know that. What does he think of you? Simply can't make me out at all. Terribly puzzled and rather bored in bits. Are you going to go on with it? I shouldn't know. But really, Brenda, he's such a dreary young man. I know it all. He's second rate and a snob, and I should think cold as a fish. But I happen to have a fancy for him, that's all. He's got to be taught a whole lot of things. That's part of his attraction. Is that your word for it? Anyway, the cub hasn't even rung me yet. If he doesn't soon, I'll have to go back to Hedden this afternoon. I scarcely saw you at Polly's last night. We went early. Brenda last was tired. When are you seeing her again? I said I'd ring up. Well, why don't you? Oh, Mumsy, what's the use? I can't afford women like Brenda Last. If I ring up, she'll say, what are you doing? And I shall have to ask her to something, and it'll be the same thing every day. I simply haven't got the money. I know it's very difficult for you, but you're getting to be an old bachelor at 25. I can tell Brenda likes you. Oh, she likes me, all right. Oh, well, I hope she makes up her mind about that flat. They're going like hotcakes. Where are you lunching? Margot's. She just rang up. Well, that's that. He hasn't rung. I dare say I'm glad, really. I'm packed up and ready to go back to Hedden. You can't go without lunching first. Well, why don't you come with me to Margot's? I know she'd love it. All right, then. Ring her up and ask. Will Mummy be on the train this time? I hope so. The party lasts a very long time. I can see her. Hello, Mummy. Oh, you've both come. I don't deserve this. <laughs> so, what's the news? Ben put the rail up ever so high, and Dr. Clapp and I jumped it six times yesterday, and six times again today. And two more of the little fish in the pond are dead, floating upside down, all swollen. And Nanny burnt her finger on the kettle yesterday. And the great cart horse that went and won is quite well again. Nothing much has happened. We missed you. What did you find to do in London all this time? Me? Oh, I've been carrying on madly with young men and spending heaps of money, and I've enjoyed it immensely. But there's one awful thing. What's that? Uh, no, I think it'd better keep. It's something you won't like at all. You bought a Pekingese? Far worse. Only I haven't done it yet. But I want to dreadfully. Go on. Tony, I found a flat. Well, you'd better lose it again, quick. Daddy, what's a flat? Mm -hmm. oh, no. oh. Mm. I suppose all this means that you're going to start again about your flat. Mm -hmm. You haven't signed any papers yet, have you? Mm -mm. And no great harm's been done. Now, Tony, mm -mm. when you think of a flat, you mean a lift. A man in a uniform, a great big front door with knobs and an entrance hall and doors opening in all directions with mm. kitchens and sculleries and dining rooms and drawing rooms and servants' bedrooms, don't you? Well, that's what a flat is, isn't it? Exactly. Now, I mean just a bedroom, a bath and a telephone. Hmm. Now, a woman I know... Who? Just a woman has fixed up a whole house like that off Belgrave Square at three pounds a week. What do you think of that? I see. Now, this is how I look at it. What's three pounds a week? You always stay at the club, which costs money, and you're always saying when I come back from shopping, why didn't you stay the night? I'm sure we spend more than three pounds a week not having a flat. Darling, do you really want this thing? Yes. Well, we might manage it, but it'll mean putting off the improvements down here. I know I don't really deserve it. I've been carrying on anyhow this week. Hello, Tony Last. Darling, I'm calling from the flat. Oh, ah. Do try to sound interested. You're the very first person I've called. Well, I'm glad of that. What's it like? There are a few bad smells, and the bath makes odd sounds. 
But when you turn on the hot tap, there's just a rush of air and nothing else. And the cold tap keeps dripping and the water is rather brown. And the cupboard doors are jammed and the curtains won't pull right across. It's lovely. You don't say so. Tony, you must be nice about it. Someone sent me flowers today. So many, there's hardly room for them. It wasn't you, was it? Yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Darling, I did so hope it was. How like you. When are you coming back? Almost at once. Good night, my sweet. Uh, good night. What a lot of talk. Wasn't it sweet of Tony to send those flowers? I'm not awfully fond of Tony. I shouldn't let that bother you. He doesn't like you much at all. Doesn't he? Why not? No one does except me. And it's very odd that I should. Like taking candy from a baby, baby, you took my heart away. So I let you take it, be careful, don't break it in two. Jock! Hello. You've been chucked? Yes. It's the last time I ask her out. Better have a drink. I've been drinking a whole lot, much the best thing. Mm. What brings you to Bratz at this time? I'm up for the night, staying here. You've got a flat now, haven't you? Hmm. Well, Brenda has. There isn't really room for two. We tried it once and it wasn't a success. What's she doing tonight? Well, that's the thing. I didn't let her know I was coming. Silly not to. I, I got fed up of being alone at Hetton, so I came up to see her, just like that. I might have known she'd be going out somewhere. Yeah. She's very high-principled about chucking. She's going to ring me later if she can get away. She's taken up a course in economics, you know. Economics? Oh. I had this idea once following you into Parliament. Brenda said if she did a course in economics, she could be useful writing speeches and other stuff. Apparently it's what Marjorie did when Alan stood on Clyde's side. He lost his deposit. You know, she'd rather die than admit it, but I believe Brenda got a bit bored at Hatton sometimes. I dare say she'll get bored with economics sometime. Still, I get to see her at weekends. We've had parties every weekend lately. I wish you'd come down, Jock. I don't seem to be able to get on with Brenda's new friends. People from economics? No, but ones I don't know. I believe I bore them. They talk about me as the old boy. John Andrew heard them. I say, come next weekend, will you? I'd love to. Sure to be lots of people in the house, but you don't mind people about. I mind it like hell. You don't think I'm a bore, do you? No. Oh, boy. Not even when I'm tight like this. Not enough bathrooms, you know. I had the plans laid out, four new ones. And then Brenda took the flat, so I had to postpone them as an economy. <laughs> I say, that's funny. We had to economise because of Brenda's economics. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, that's funny. You seem pretty low tonight. I am, rather. Worried about the pig scheme. Yeah. Constituents keep writing. Well, I felt low, bloody low, but I'm all right again now. <laughs> Funny thing, you feel low because your girl's chucked, and I feel low because mine won't chuck. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's funny. But I've felt low for weeks now. Bloody low. How about some brandy? Yes. Why not? After all, there's more to life than women and pigs. Mm. McDougall! Oh, there you are. Yes. How did you know we wanted some brandy? I didn't, sir. Then why are you carrying that telephone? It is a man delivering a message from Lady Brenda, sir. Oh, thank you. I'll speak to her. Hello, darling. Mr. Last, I have a message here from Lady Brenda. All right, hey, put me through, sir. Uh, she can't speak to you herself. But she asked me to tell you that she's very sorry, but she can't join you tonight. Uh, she's very tired and has gone home to bed. She's very tired and she's gone to bed. That's right. In that case, put her on. Good night. Oh. The old boy's plastered. Oh, dear. I feel rather awful about him. But what can he expect coming up suddenly like this? He's got to be taught not to make surprise visits. <laughs> I'd better answer it. Hello? Uh, I want to speak to Lady Brenda last. Tony, darling, this is me, Brenda. Well, 
some damn fools said I couldn't speak to you. I left a message from where I was dining. Are you having a lovely evening? Hellish. I'm with Jock. He's worried about the pig scheme. Shall we come round and see you? No, not now. I'm terribly tired and just going to bed. Well, come and see you. Tony, you're not to. Do you hear? I can't have you making a brawl. Be a good boy and stay at the club. Please. Shan't be long. John, you've got to go. Have you got your taxi fare? No. We'll find some change in my back. I'll tell you what. Before we go to Brenda's, let's go somewhere else first. Some lousy joint. All right. Tell the driver to go to some lousy joint. Driver, go to some lousy joint. You can always ring Brenda from the lousy joint. Yeah, I think we ought to do that. Yeah. She's a grand girl. Grand girl. Do you know, I believe he's taking us to the old hundreds. I thought they closed it down years ago. That's funny. This brandy tastes just like ginger ale. What does it say on the bottle? Very old liqueur fine champagne. Well, that's all right then. Hello, I'm Babs and this is Millie. Would you like us to sit with you? Do you have such a thing as a cigarette? Certainly, and certainly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm Algernon and this is Eustace. Pleased to meet you, Eustace. You're married, aren't you? No. Oh, I can always tell. Your friend is too. Uh, yes, he is. You'd be surprised how many gentlemen come here just to talk about their wives. Well, he hasn't. You see, the trouble is she's studious. She's taking a course in economics. I think it's nice for a girl to be interested in things. I must find a telephone. Where is it? Do you really mean the telephone or the gentleman's? No, the telephone. Upstairs. you do? I design postman's hats. Oh, go on. <laughs> and my friend trains sea lions. Tell us another. <laughs> I said, Tony, what can we do something about Brenda? I told her we weren't coming, didn't I? Yes, but you might still be hoping. We could go now and bring her on the way out. Perhaps we ought. She sounded rather annoyed mm. before. Aren't you coming home with us? Uh, not uh, tonight, I'm afraid. All right. Well, how about a little present? Mm. We're professional dancing partners, you know. Oh, all right. How much? We leave that to the discretion of the gentleman. Mm. There you are. A pound? We've sat with you for two hours. Hello. Hello, Brenda. Well, Tony, how are you? Terrible. I was tight last night. You were. I'm feeling pretty guilty, too. I'm not surprised. I don't remember everything clearly, but I have the impression Jock and I were rather bores. You were. Are you in a rage? Well, I was last night. What made you do it? We felt low. I bet you feel lower this morning. A box of white roses has just arrived from Jock. Oh, I wish I'd thought of that. Now, just you go straight back to the country. Am I not going to see you? Not today, I'm afraid. I've got lectures all the morning and I'm lunching out. And you couldn't possibly chuck lunch or one of the lectures? Not possibly, darling. I see. You're an angel to be so sweet about last night. Goodbye, Tony. Well, things couldn't have worked out better. If I know Tony, he'll be tortured with guilt for weeks to come. He's put himself so much in the wrong, he won't say anything, whatever I do. He had to learn not to make surprise visits. You are one for making people learn things. Hello, Daddy. You didn't mind me coming to the station, did you? A maid, Nanny like me. I'm very pleased to see you, John. How was Mummy? She sounded very well. I didn't see her. I talked to her several times on the telephone, though. But you can telephone her from here, can't you? Why did you go all the way to London to telephone her? Why, Daddy? The rates are cheaper. That's no reason. Why, Daddy? Look, John, if you don't stop asking questions, I shan't ever let you meet the train again. We'll see Mummy soon enough at the weekend. Uh, 
Oh, my poor Brenda. It's an appalling room. It's not one we use a great deal. I should think not. What I wanted was a small sitting room, more or less, to myself. Don't you think it has possibilities? Yeah, everything's horrible. It's so dark. Well, I really don't think... I know exactly what Brenda wants. A natural sheepskin carpet with white chromium plating covering the walls. Well, you could blow the whole thing sky high. What's up with him? Brenda? Are you awake? Tony, I was almost asleep. Well, it's just... I haven't had any time alone with you since you arrived. What with Polly and Veronica and Mrs Beaver. They're our guests. And your guests? I don't know them. Do you really want Mrs Beaver to do up the morning room? Can you imagine it? White chromium plating? It's just an idea. I'm very tired. You want to be left alone? So tired. I see. Well, <laughs> good night. Good night. Don't mind, do you? You know, Polly, I'm not absolutely happy about Tony. What's the old boy been up to? Nothing much yet. But it must be pretty dull for him alone at Hetton all this time. He'll soon have Mrs Beaver's workman for company. It's not quite the same. We should get him interested in a girl. If only we could. Who is there? There's always old Sybil. Darling, he's known her all his life. Oh, Suki de Foucault Esterhazy. He isn't at his best with Americans. The trouble is, I've become such a habit with him. He won't take easily to a new one. Ought she to be like me, or quite different, do you think? Oh. Different, I'd say. It's hard to tell, but we'll find him someone. Let's do it soonest. Then she can come down and meet him next weekend. Princess Abdul Akbar. Oh, uh, hello. Oh, Mr. Lars. What a sweet old place this is. Thank you. Uh, I'm afraid Brenda hasn't arrived yet. She's coming by car with Lady Cockcross. It has such uh, an atmosphere. But, of course, you're used to it. When you've been very unhappy, as I have, you appreciate these things. Yes. Brenda's been such a friend to me. Do you know, Mr Last, I'm going to call you Teddy right away. And you must uh, call me Jenny. Princess is so formal, isn't it? Of course, my husband was called Moulay rather than Prince in Morocco, but there's no proper equivalent for a woman. So I've always called myself Princess. Moulay is far higher, really. My husband was a descendant of the Prophet. Are you interested in the East? No. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, I know very little about it. Uh... You must go there, Teddy. I know you'd like it. Uh, I expect you'd like to see your room. Oh, no. I'll stay here. Ah. I'd like to curl up like a cat in front of the fire. And if you're nice to me, I'll purr. And if you're cruel, I'll pretend not to notice. Just like a cat. Shall I purr, Teddy? Uh, yes, do, if that's what you like doing. <laughs> How English you are, Teddy. <laughs> ah, here's my son, John Andrew. John, come and be introduced to Princess Abdul Akbar. Aren't you going to give me a kiss? Oh, what a beautiful smell. It's my last link with the East. Are you a real princess? What a charming son you have, Teddy. Why do you call Daddy Teddy? Because I hope we're going to be great friends. What a funny reason. Oh, excuse me, sir. Come along, John. It's time for your bed. Oh, all right. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Princess. Good night, Johnny boy. What did you call me? Johnny boy. You are funny with names. <laughs> <laughs> what a heavenly child. I love children. That's been my great tragedy. 
It was when he found I couldn't have children that the Moulet first showed the other side of his nature. Really? Brenda, who is this joke woman? Darling, don't you like her? I don't know about not liking her exactly. She's just a joke, isn't she? Is she? Oh, dear. She's had a terrible life, you know. So I gathered. You've given me a pretty long bout of her tonight. At one point, she told me her womb was out of place. I'm sorry, darling. Polly is so demanding. I was hoping to see something of you. Oh. Brenda, uh, you, you aren't angry still about my getting tight that night and waking you up? No, sweet. Do I seem angry? I don't know. You do rather. <laughs> Has it been an amusing week? No. Very hard work. <sighs> By metalism, you know. Oh, yes. Well, I uh, suppose you want to go to sleep. Mm. So tired. <clears throat> Good night, darling. Good night. <sighs> we must write it down as a failure, definitely. What does the old boy expect? It isn't as though he was everybody's money. I dare say it would have been all right if she hadn't got his name wrong. Anyway, this lets you out. You've done far more than most wives would to cheer the old boy up. Yes, that's certainly true. However, next weekend I've decided will be Tony's weekend. I'll invite guests he actually likes. I'll let him sleep in my room. I'll even go to church and on the tour of the cottages with him. It sounds terribly dull. Yes, but it will be my last weekend at Hedden for a long time. Oh, I've had a lovely time. Yes, I thought you probably had. Just like the old days, before the economics began. Everything is all right, isn't it? Yes, of course, darling. I get depressed down here all alone, and imagining things. You aren't to brood, Tony. You know that's not allowed. I won't brood anymore. Mm -hmm. I shan't be here next weekend, by the way. I'm staying with Veronica. Am I asked? Well, you were, of course. But I refuse for you. You know you always hate staying away. I wouldn't mind coming. Oh, darling. I wish I'd known. But I'm afraid it'll be too late now. She's only got a tiny house and I didn't think you liked her much. I hated her like hell. Oh, never mind. The hounds are meeting on Wednesday, you know. Are we giving them a lawn? Yes, darling, you know we do every year. So we do. You, you couldn't stay down till then. Not possibly, darling. You see, if I miss one lecture, I get right behind and can't follow the next. Well, Jock's staying on. He wants his new girl to come down, some shameless blonde. You don't mind? Me? Of course not. It's a Mrs. Rattery, isn't it? Um, American. There's a major Rattery in Herefordshire somewhere. Ben apparently. was asking if we'd let John go out. Oh, he's far too young. N not to hunt, just let him ride to the first covert. He'd love it so. Is it quite safe? Oh, yes, surely. Bless his heart. I wish I could be here to see him. You could change your mind. Oh, don't make a thing about it, Tony. It's delightful you're coming down. What do you think of Tony? Is he married to that rather lovely woman we saw at the Café de Paris? Yes. The one you said was in love with that young man? Yes. Funny of her. Hello, John. How's Thunderclap? Hello, Mrs. Rathwee. She's terribly fresh. I've never known her like this. How's yours? An absurd horse, but I rather like him. This is my first time this year. 
It's my first time too, ever. Well, we shall both be terribly stiff. You'll have to show me the country. I expect they'll draw a brute and wood first. There's a big fox there. Dad and I saw him last week, didn't we, Dad? We did. Now, don't forget, Ben, he can ride with the hunt only as far as the covert. Yes, sir. Wouldn't there be any harm in his staying a bit to see the hounds working? No, I suppose not, but he's not to stay out more than an hour. Daddy! I'll see to it, sir. Don't worry, my boy. You'll get a hunt right enough. They're calling the hounds off. Come along then, Master John. We'll go back on the road. You've had enough for today. But they haven't had any! You see, John, if you go back in good time today, your dad will be all the more willing for you to come out another day. There may be another day. The world may come to an end. Look, here comes Miss Rippon from the village on that nappy bay. Looks like she's going back too. You had a fall, Miss Rippon. I'm taking him away. I can't do a thing with him this morning. I can't think what's come over him. He wants a man up. Be careful now, young John. A bus is coming. Now, let me go first, miss. He'll follow. Give him a tap, but don't hold too hard on his mouth. All right. Oh, thank goodness, it's slowing down. Hey, look out for the motorbike behind. <laughs> look out, John! It wasn't anybody's fault. As soon as he fell, Miss Rippon's horse caught him full on the base of the skull. The doctor said he was killed instantly. There was nothing anyone could do. I know. What on earth are we going to tell Tony? I'm so sorry, Tony. What on earth are we going to tell Brenda? Do you know where she is? Um, she's probably at that school, but we can't tell her over the telephone. One of us will have to go up. Yes. I think I shall have to stay here. I don't know why, really, but there'll be things to see to. It's, it's an awful thing to ask anyone to do. I'll go. Thank you, Jock. It's good of you to stay with me. Not at all. I'm afraid this is a difficult situation. After all, we scarcely know each other. You don't have to think about me. But it must be awful for you. And you must stop thinking that. <laughs> the absurd thing is, I'm not thinking it, just saying it. I keep thinking of other things all the time. It's going to be a lot worse for Brenda. She hadn't got much else, except John. I've got her, and, and I love the house. But with Brenda, John always came first. At only quarter past four. Jock will be halfway there by now. Do you play Bazik? I'm afraid not. Or Piquet? Uh, I've never been able to learn any card game except Animal Snap. I've just thought of something. Don't you ever take a rest from thinking? I suppose the evening papers have got hold of it already. Brenda may see it on a placard or just casually pick up a paper. What can we do about it? There isn't anything we can do. We've just got to wait. What was that game you mentioned again? Snap. I'll buy it. Oh, it's just a child's game. It'd be ridiculous with two. Show me. Well, each of us chooses an animal. All right. I'm a dog and you're a hen. Now what? We turn over cards in turn until there's a pair. And the first to make their animal noise wins the cards. Let's try it. Bow wow. Oh. Bow Wow. You know you're not putting your heart into this. I'm sorry. Cup, 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 cup. Too late. I missed it. I discovered her at Suki's, which was Your lovely. fortune teller is taking an age over Veronica. Yeah, she's famed for her thoroughness. She must look at every part of the foot <laughs> before she can deliver her pronouncements. <laughs> How was it, Veronica? <laughs> I mustn't tell, or it spoils it all. <laughs> My turn now. Why is Mr Beaver not hanging round today? He's flown to France with his mother to see some new wallpapers. Brenda's been worrying all day, thinking he's had an accident. How touching.
We'd better stop. It's not a very good game. Mm. And to think, it's the only one you know. Well, that was most enjoyable. Why? How odd you all look. Jock Grant Mingus wants to see you downstairs. Jock? How very extraordinary. It isn't anything awful, is it? You'd better go and see him. What is it, Jock? Tell me quickly, I'm scared. There's been a very serious accident. John? Yes. Dead? Yes. Tell me what happened. Why do you know about it first? I've been down at Hetton since the weekend. Hetton? Don't you remember? John was going riding today. John? John Andrew? I... Oh, thank God! Oh! <laughs> In episode one of A Handful of Dust, Brenda was played by Tara Fitzgerald and Tony by Jonathan Cullen. Beaver was Ronan Vibert, Mrs. Beaver, Sally Grace, Jock, James Simmons, and John Andrew, Nathan Grower. Marjorie was Victoria Carling, Polly, Colleen Prendergast, Mrs. Rattray, Jane Whittenshaw, and Jenny, Alice Arnold. Millie was Daryl Pertwee, Ben, Keith Drinkle, Nanny, Anne Beach, Veronica, Patience Tomlinson, and McDougal, Kim Wall. Other parts were played by members of the cast. A Handful of Dust was dramatised for radio by Bill Matthews and directed by Sally Avens. Tomorrow, Brenda's revelation of adultery shatters Tony's life as A Handful of Dust continues continues, continues.